Hello, I'm Doug, sitting down to give you a whiteboard discussion of the CHSH inequality of quantum mechanics for complex numbers and quaternions. It's basically a generalization of Bell's inequality. The CHSH is Klaus, Horn, Shimony, and Holt. So they were generalizing the uh, inequality so that it could deal with more experimental situations, uh, uh, tests of um, what's going on there. And if you want to see an accompanying uh, IPython notebook, just go to this bit.ly place and look for VP lowercase dash C H S H, are those all capitalized? And you'll get the notebook and you can test it out, see if uh, you think I did everything right. Uh, and you'll have the whole tool set. Okay, so I first want to talk about what I call the complex to quaternion correspondence principle, which I'm just making up, <laughs> okay? Quaternions have as a formal subgroup complex numbers. So anything and everything you can do with complex numbers, you necessarily can do with quaternions by setting a couple of the, uh, the values equal to zero. And because of that, it severely constrains uh, irresponsible behavior you can do <laughs> with uh, quaternions. Uh, it, it's kind of like uh, Lord Kelvin, so long ago, talked about the unmixed evil of quaternions, uh, that there's this kind of tradition to say, well, because quaternions can't commute, uh, they must be like horrid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people keep doing these things because they don't have my correspondence principle, which says, well, do everything with your quaternion tool set, setting a couple of them equal to zero, and then once you got that working 100%, then expand it and see what's going on. Don't just be there saying, well, there's a reason to throw it all away. Okay, because, because uh, several learned people... For example, there's this guy, Stephen Adler, over 550-page book on quaternion quantum mechanics, and he comes to the conclusion that somewhere in there, I mean, it's hard to find it, <laughs> that, that you can have superluminal uh, information transfer. And it's like, well, that's not, that's not good. That doesn't happen in complex. What What is it that suddenly, you know, uh, leads to the problems? Uh, don't worry, it, it, it still goes on. There's this guy back in uh, May of 2018 who said, man, we've got, got this problem with um, superliminal uh, tra um, information transfer. Um, those are all, to me, deal breakers. And they, they better not be true <laughs> of what's going on. And I'll at least kind of specifically say what's, what's the problem with this paper. It's, it's not particularly complex, actually, uh, what he messed up. Okay, so in some ways, uh, that notebook I, I wrote, 80% of it is really boring <laughs> because it's just the complex case. And we know it works for, you know, the, the calculation works for complex numbers. So there's no, no doubt it will work. Okay, so I, I just want to give you a sense of, of what's going on there. Okay, so what I had done like over the last year or so, is just kind of uh, dealt with thinking about these sorts of things, a wave function. Um, and I'm going to just write this in a nice generalized way. And we'll put in an operator here. And then we have our A1, A2 to our AN. All right. Now, that will yield just one value because we are, um, because that's what the bracket notation kind of uh, does. It takes the transformation of this and the conjugate of it. And actually, because it's, because of those two things, this one quaternion that you get out of this, this singlet states or the scalar, the scalar that you get out of it has the form 
of one number. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, that can be anything. All right? There's just no... Until you start saying, well, I want that operator to be measurable. Well, once you said that part, then this is actually going to pluck out a real value for this whole whole kind of story. This will be, if as long as that's an observable... <laughs> If it's not an observable, this thing can be whatever quaternion you want, uh, all kinds of imaginaries, nothing's, nothing's limited. Um, but if it's an observable, then we're, it's going to be a quaternion of this form. And that's very, very important. Um, and as a matter of fact, I might as well say, that's what this, uh, this uh, McCaig fellow uh, messed up. Was he just like um, picked out an operator and when you, you put it in this kind of expression, it doesn't give you a real value. And therefore, it's not an observable, and therefore, it's of no interest, like the paper itself. So, um, if you come across this, that's the reason to say, I shouldn't bother with it. <laughs> okay? All right, fine. So, I spent all this time just understanding, like, one of those expressions. And then what I learned about <laughs> when was start when I took this started to take this uh, just uh, very short introduction to quantum computing, what quantum computing does is it deals with not one of these but n of them. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean like let's say you've got an A, and instead of doing all the n's, well that'll be kind of implied. And I'll have an operator. Let's say we'll, we'll use a sigma guy. And then we've got A here. And then we'll bring in a B. Great. And we'll use a different operator. And we know that when we calculate that out, if these are observables, and they are, in this particular case, so we're, that's that's what we're going for. We're going to get a number that's kind of that that particular form. Okay, and that's that's all well and good. Um, but what is this? All this talk about having a um, superposition of states. I mean, that sounds like such a big scary idea, and it really isn't. Once you kind of get what they're doing. Uh, which is to say, have more than one of these. So you can imagine, say, having this A be a zero, but having the B be one. And then we will subtract away one where this is one, the first guy, the first A guy, uh, but then the B uh, is zero. All right, cool. Um, there are always these normalization factors that you have to include to get things uh, right. Um, but you go, okay, now I want to like do a calculation with this superposition of states. So you go, oh, this is just the difference uh, of two things. So it'll be like like this one squared, that one squared, and then each of those intermediary uh, kind of guys. And this sigma x only acts on the first guy, whether it's 0 or 1. And this w only acts on the 1 and uh, that guy. And I should say, and this is one of these things that's implied by this um, nomenclature, this can have a completely different set of basis vectors than these. In fact, this can be completely different state dimensions. Remember, I make a distinction between space-time dimensions where you have no choice. you got one dimension for time, three dimensions for space. But state spaces, they can be two, they can be uh, three, they can be eight, they can be infinite. And it's okay if those guys have different number of states. Because when I say I really care about observables, I'm saying when I do this, I better get a real number out of it. Now it can be a negative number. That's fine. It all depends on kind of 
exactly uh, the sort of calculation that you're doing. Okay, so you say, all right, I got to get my four four dudes out of this, as it were. So that will be, uh, let's go for Mr. Zero. And I'm going to go a Sigma X. And we'll go one. Cool. And then, oh, the, uh, so, oh, that was wrong. Because this is the B state. The B state gets the W dude. All right, cool. So let's let's swap zeros for ones. So that this will be, and this is kind of, it's got that look of a square. So these guys are going to be all positive. And then you got your, your mixed up guys. So your mixed up guys will have one, sigma x, one, so zero, whatever. Um, let's do that. And then finally, one, one's on the outside. Yeah. W, one. Cool. All right. <clears throat> now, these guys are all positive because these are the the, the kind of the squared guys, and these are the mixed terms that, that are negative. And you have to calculate that out. And that's exactly what I do in that notebook. And uh, one of these guys is positive, and the rest are negative, except that one positive guy gets subtracted. So um, all of these things end up being one root... Uh, one over root two, you get four of them, etc. <laughs> oh, so so anyway, if you add up all of these things, you end up with minus two times the square root of two. All right, because this is a quantum uh, calculation. This is this is this is the prediction of quantum mechanics about correlations of what oh okay so just a, a, a little more background uh, what's they're, they're thinking about measuring um, in literally four different ways um, some kind of property like spin and then they're saying well when you're not when observer a is uh, or, yeah, observer A is measuring along here, how often do they get the same result when, when B is measuring along here? And it turns out, always the same. <laughs> no, the important thing is when you compare, compare like, two different things, like A measured here and B measured there, it's like, yeah, they didn't kind of get it right right all the time. And 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 you say, yeah, well, how close did they, uh, uh, what was the uh uh, correlation between the measurements. How often did they get it right? And classically, if you do this uh, sort of thing, uh, you say as this is as much as you can get, except if you do the experiment. <laughs> and you say for these class uh, quantum system that this is in fact being confirmed, and this is uh, actually minus two point eight. One, uh, two, eight, something like that, uh, sort of a, sort of a number, and um, that's that's what's experimentally confirmed, and that's uh, what we uh, know by experiment uh, is all right. So that worked because it kind of had to. <laughs> uh, my, and then I said, okay, now what happens when I make this uh, into a quaternion kind of uh, calculation? Well, what do I mean by that? Okay, so I didn't say what basis I used for the A and the B. As a matter of fact, I used several. I used the most easy one, which is like 1001. Uh, but I also used uh, this one, where I went, okay, my one state is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. And the other is zero one one one. Did that work? No, no, it didn't work because this guy 
This guy had one over Root 2. It was like, everybody had that. This guy didn't work that way. This needed a 1 over the square root of 6. And then it worked. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't like, it wasn't like particularly hard uh, to get right. So then I said, yeah, well, can I do something else and get this minus 2 to the square root of 2? And so I tried 0, this sort of thing. And then I tried, how about 0, 1, 2, 3? Uh, square root of 6 did not work. <laughs> I needed uh, 1 over square root of 28. Well, that's because this is 14 times 2, okay? Like this is 3 times 2. So that's all, that, that's all that's going on. So is it super important that this works? I actually kind of think it's both super boring and super important, okay? It's super boring because, okay, so so I've also shown that zero, what I first did was, was show that this, this worked, right? And, and that's saying I'm pointing there and, and my, my other points are all zero. And now I'm just pointing somewhere else in space. And, you know, it really shouldn't matter where the heck I point in space so long as I don't like magnify my space pointing. As, 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 as long as I keep my space pointing in check uh, in terms of how huge it is, okay, that it doesn't really get any huger than, than just the one. And uh, that's essentially all I'm doing. So um, I think it's, it's important, though, because it kind of is saying that, that the physics we've been doing since the 20s has always chosen one direction. <laughs> it's always said, let's go that way, and let's make sure the other two directions, whatever we want to call them, don't care about them, like at all. It's phase. I don't care. And I'm setting it to zero. And I'm going to like do my calculations, and my all my calculations are going to work, because they really have <laughs> all these kinds of years, which is cool. All right? But now we're saying... I want to answer the riddle that's, that, that bothered Einstein. It's like, what are you saying about this physically? And if you're talking about complex numbers, I'm kind of like, I'm at a loss. Now, when you're saying I'm quaternion, then I say, hey, I can actually think of these literally as events in space-time. Three dimensions for space, not one. Okay? And one for that time-like thing. And then say, hey, and I'll, now I flip I take all my information, which I believe I have. And because I'm a math guy, I can also imagine, or at least write down, <laughs> the mirror image of it, okay? And look at the minus x and the minus y and the minus z, okay? So I've kind of like tried to double up my data in a way. In a way, it's not really doubling up the information. It's just transforming it and using the transformed data. But the thing about the transformed data is that it's space-like separated. These two guys are space-like separated, and that's just a consequence of throwing in the minus sign on the x, the y, and the z. And that's a perfectly fine thing to do. As a matter of fact, as long as you get a real number out of this exercise, we know what it means. It means the odds of someone sitting at location zero, 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 an observer gets to see an event happen. So I haven't altered this uh, CHSH inequality like at all. I end up with exactly the same number. I can point my basis vectors um, that I'm working with any direction I want to, and I get the t my minus two, the square root of two, but now I have a physical sense of what's going on. Why non-locality non isn't sometimes there in quantum mechanics. It's always there because we're always taking the conjugate of a wave function in order to make statements about what we really see in the physical world when we don't have much of stuff around and need to have a zero lower bound state. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.